Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing a special video with a special guest. I have Animated Jay here with me, James Jimenez. He is a dancer. We've been talking online for a few years about dance and many different subjects. He just graduated school and has earned his master's degree in marriage and family therapy. And he is a special kind of dancer because he wants to create a place where mental health and dance are combined. And so he's using his education background and his dance background and mixing the two and bringing up lots of really interesting and taboo subjects that haven't really been covered or talked about in the dance world. So James, welcome to the show. Just yesterday, James posted a video and thought it might be an interesting subject to talk about here today. He suggested to dancers that it would be interesting to explore many different emotions to spark your creativity and not just focus on only happiness but maybe create or be inspired by sadness or maybe something that was negative that may have happened in your life. Is that more or less what you were trying to say in your video yesterday? Yeah, definitely. It's about, for me, my video is about using every emotion that you experience as a human as fuel for your creativity or inspiration for pieces or performances. Not just limiting yourself to happiness. I need to be happy to make this piece. Or I need to be happy to go into this competition or I can only dance when I'm happy. So by tapping into every emotion, now you've opened yourself up to so many possibilities through your dance. It's like a, just another level, just another layer you've uncovered. Yeah, and so, it's really yeah. interesting. I mean, it may be obvious when art is known for having this kind of struggle process to create greatness and masterpieces. And yeah, it really made me think and self-reflect. And I think a lot of dancers should be thinking about things outside of just watching videos and watching other right. dancers. And Exactly, because for me, a lot of the times, I think a lot of dancers, we, we want to have people enter our world. We want people to picture the ideas we have in our head, the physicalness, how I move my hands or how I move my body. It's all physical. I want people to see that. But what about the feeling? I think people forget that humans, we want a connection. We want to feel connected to another person. And when we tap into other things, such as maybe uh, moments in our life where we felt depressed or moments in our life where we felt angry, and we use that as fuel for our movement, people go, they, they go past the physical. The physical is entertaining, but then it's like, wow, like there was something more than just what you did. It was how you did it. It was the feeling behind it. Those are the, that's what inspires me when I have this connection when i see someone that is more than just dance it's it's breathtaking because i can either relate or something of, there's just some presence about what they're doing so yeah again it's, it's really about when you tap into these other things like even dancing while you're sad or angry it's very cathartic it's very therapeutic um try it i, I recommend for many people i've done it myself i've had moments where i was sad and i would put on a song that would amplify it because you don't want to change the emotion. A lot of people want to get away from feeling uncomfortable, but I would amplify it and I would do a performance to sadness. And I watched myself and I'm like, that was different. I moved differently. There was a different feeling. And there were even things I was doing during the performance that were unconscious. Things were coming out when I watched it again. Like I would grab my heart and I would cut it and I felt disconnected from myself. But I wasn't thinking about that when I'm dancing. It just starts to come out. And that's the therapeutic side. You're starting to reveal things about yourself. You're starting to let go. And to me, that's what dancing is really about, being as vulnerable, being as open, and showing people who you are. Oh, man. I could not have said that any better. That's beautiful, really. That is such a great insight um, that so many dancers need to hear, including myself. And I'm glad you're here to, to let us know about it because we should all be reminded that it is important to, yeah, reflect on, on your own emotions, good or bad, and see what comes out. Let it flow. Let it flow, let it be, let it take you somewhere. It's gonna take you on a journey. It's gonna be an adventure, whatever you're feeling at that time. But just but express it through your movement. There's a there's a he's a dance therapist actually, or 
there's a lot of research. It's called Laban Movement Therapy or Laban Movement Analyst. And what he did is he noticed how depending on people's feelings, that's how they move. So if someone was sad, their shoulders are shrugged over, they're looking down, they're very close. People that were happy, they were more open, their chest was out. People who were anxious, they were more cautious. But basically what he's saying is your feelings will influence your movement. So I tell dancers, you want to start creating new things. You want to see where your movement can go. You want to try something different. Dance in this feeling. Dance when you're feeling that. You're going to automatically do different stuff if you're being honest. You're not going to dance the same way. If I told a popper, I want you to, you could do your same style of dance, but I want you to think of a memory that something that was painful in your life. And now I want you to put a song that complements that. You're gonna move differently. You're not gonna move the same way as I put Slick Dog and I want you to go hard and go tense and aggression. No, it's really interesting what you're saying. And there's when I when I try and think about all of the incredible dancers that exist, the well-known dancers, there's it's really, really rare in street dance to, to find a dancer that actually can connect to you on this deep emotional level. It's really rare and there's only very few performances that I can think of that that do reach you on that kind of emotional level. And usually the performances that I can recall are performances by older people, by older dancers. Like um, one that comes to mind is uh, a woman named Natalie Interline and she's a classical ballet and classical jazz dancer who also does baton twirling and hat juggling. And she like puts it all together in this crazy act. I might, I may have shown it to you, but it's going to be the next What Makes This Dancer Great video. I'm kind of showing her off to the, the street dance world for this reason, for the, exactly this reason, to show that there is other t ways to dance and that you can show intensity through emotion. It doesn't have to be physical. It can be a look or a texture or a feeling like the way you walk or like you said, it's the way you do something that dictates the the emotion. And that is a really, she, I think she's a really good example of what you're talking about. And her best work is when she's over 50, you know? And so I think it's really inspiring to watch dancers that are able to move you and maybe make you cry or and and i say and I, and I wonder again maybe the fact that she's so she's older than her 50s was it all the experiences she's had in her life that maybe she uses as fuel for expressing herself you know i mean we we've all gone through experiences we've all gone through some form of sadness some loss if it wasn't a relationship it was a family member that may have died or passed away um, there's so much, we have so much material, but we, we, we like, it's like there's all this material, but we, we blind ourselves. We keep ourselves just looking at this. I have to use this when there's so much you could take from. There really is. I, I forgot. I will, I watch a lot of YouTube and I also watch a lot of podcasts. And of course the most popular podcast, Joe Rogan's podcast. And he had a yeah. guest on. I don't remember his name and it's kind of sad that I don't because I really loved what he was saying, but I'm going to quote him on this blindly. <laughs> he said that specialization is for insects and that humans, we're able to do anything and everything and we shouldn't just focus ourselves on just being specialized or just being this kind of dancer or that kind of dancer, you can really draw inspiration from anything and everything. And you could be anything and everything that you could ever dream or imagine if you just put your mind to it, practice, and keep your mind open and not be judgmental. Right, and that's totally true. And, and again, it's I feel it's also about the people you hang around with, you surround yourself by. Oh In my gosh, life. yes. If you're constantly going to sessions or ciphers or your crew that they don't they don't express anything. They, the, the mindset is, you know, we're here to train, we're here to, you know, battle, show people what's up. And besides that, there's nothing more. There's no release. There's no talking about deeper things. You know, you're not gonna want to share your feelings. 
You know, I see so many times I'll go to a cipher or a session and, and there's people who are new, who are there that don't know anyone, you know, they don't know anyone and they're watching and everyone's so busy just trying to like do their drills or just do their moves and no one's connecting with each other. It's, it's crazy. It really is. You know, nobody wants to connect. I, so many times I, I go to sessions and it's like, hi, nice to meet you. Like, you're a dancer. That's dope. Like, what else are you into? Like, what do you like to do? What What is more? You're more than just a dancer. Like, people, remember, right. human, you're a human. <laughs> you're a human being that found this art form that you fell in love with. You know, let's not forget the fact that you're a human being, though. You know, we, we push all that aside. Like, there's a lot. There's it's a lot, and I and I really that's why I really want to make a place where dancers can talk and be honest with their feelings. Because here's the thing: everything you do in dance is coming from. It's going to affect another part of your life. If you're able to release your emotions in front of an audience or in front of a, a circle or a cipher, you're able to release what you're feeling. You'll slowly start to be able to release what you're feeling to people who are non-dancers or even family members. You'll be able to start. You know, I was feeling this way. Maybe even relationship communication. You start to open up more. So try it and dance first. See what happens. Oh, absolutely. I think that's great advice. I absolutely. And I'm going to be taking that advice as well. <laughs> you know, who, another dancer that came to mind while you were talking to is uh, Daniel Campos, B-Boy Cloud. Because I remember back a long time ago, I've seen him before at a jam at Claws Out a long time ago, and he stuck out like a sore thumb at a, at a jam, you know, where the mentality, especially in the b-boy world, is very specific and very focused on, in one direction. And if you think outside that box or outside that direction, you're really an outcast. Um, from the community and I always felt like for a long time Cloud was outcasted you know for doing you know really different flavors and style moves and doing really artistic and other dance styles and mixing it with his b-boy for a long time he just got hated on for it because people around him just the people he was hanging around and the, the scene that he was hanging around was just not letting him grow and then as soon as he got older and started doing things outside of the b-boy scene is when he started to really grow as a dancer and get well known and recognition and being flown out everywhere and just exploded. And I think um, that's a really great case for what you're talking about. And he does in a lot of his performances tell stories that are realistic and that do have emotional depth. And I think he's a great role model for lots of dancers and he's a role model for myself but i think oh, yeah go go ahead man sorry i was gonna say like he as you're talking about because i don't know much about his history of where he came from and where he is now i've seen his pieces but it sounds like he wanted to show people more of himself he didn't want to just be put in a box he wanted to express himself deeper he wanted to show people more of who he is and as as usual People don't like, people get uncomfortable with different people. When they see something that's different, someone being out of the norm, they like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. But most of the time, it sounds like when people stick to that, they keep going, they keep pushing. They end up, they end up making it. They end up inspiring so many people then to also be different. Maybe I could be a little more, you know, open to this. Maybe I could try this, you know? So it is beautiful when, when again, it goes back to the layers. The more you open the layers of yourself, the more you start to create, you start to flow more. So, I think that's a really good point to end this on. It's starting to become a longer video than I thought. We could probably talk about this for hours like we have in the past when I was with you in LA. We ended up going on and on sure. with crazy conversations like this. But these are the kind of crazy conversations people need to have to better their lives and to better the art and the experience out there for all of us dancers. No, definitely, you know. And, and the one thing I want to say, though, is for people to try this, I want you I want, to, I want you to try this. I want you to, as a dancer, and not even if you're a dancer, I want you to close your eyes 
And I want you to imagine or picture a time in your life where there was a challenge or a struggle, something that really means a lot to you. And after you imagine that, I want you to pick a song that you feel matches that moment. And then I want that person to play the music with their eyes closed and just let themselves move. And that experience and alone, I'm curious on what, what would happen for that dancer, what they may experience. They may not experience anything. They may experience something. But I really recommend dancers to try that. I think they should try it and then post the results in the comments as a challenge mm. to make sure that they do it. Because we did, I know I was about to end this, but we did talk about another subject before, or you inspired me to talk about a subject James also asked a bunch of cool questions on his Facebook and you guys should go check him out. Check out James Jimenez. It's spelled the way it sounds on Facebook. He always probes the, the audience, his audience and asks really interesting questions. And one of the questions he asked a long time ago and he got me reflecting on myself again. And I ended up making a video about it right here that you could check out. Um, where he asked us dancers what our definition of creativity was and it sounds like an easy question at first but oh my gosh to create your own definition for creativity you've got to be a pretty creative person <laughs> but james can you elaborate on that real quick just real fast i want to pick your brain on that question yeah, what's your definition for creativity? Because okay. you ask everybody all the time and we never get to ask you back. So on this question, what's your definition of creativity? It'll probably be a beautiful response. All the words that you've spoken all night have been beautiful and poetic and true and factual. So I really appreciate your educated responses and your, your brilliant mind, man. And yeah, so what's your definition of creativity? Not, sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> Let me see if I could. Uh, I'll give us. I'll try to give a simple form because I know I could go really in depth in this. But I want to say there's two things that come to my mind. It's weird. It's like not one definition. There is no definition that can label creativity. There, you can't put it in a box because creativity is outside the box. So even the question, how do you label creativity? It's hard. It's like it's kind right. of it's difficult paradox. to put it in a. If yeah. I had to say it. The two things that come to mind is creativity is taking everything you've experienced, looking at everything, feelings, thoughts, memories, books, movies, games, structures, colors, every single thing that is existence or in your mind and mixing and matching these things and letting, letting them go, creating them in the physical world. You just let your mind play. You take what you like in your mind you start little by little pushing it together, developing it. And then you're like, here's a starfish, you know? That's, that's the one way of putting it, so. Well, I think that's a beautiful definition for it, in my opinion. Mine was much more simple and uh, <laughs> caveman-like. <laughs> no, there's definitely... No, I totally agree. Sorry, the gimbal just ran out of battery. I don't think I've ever had that happen before. But I guess that's a good sign that we should wrap this up. Thank you, James, for sharing your insights with us. I would love to have you back on the channel in the future. You, this is just really, I'm barely just picking the, the thin ed, like layer membrane of your brain. And I'd love to talk more in depth about dancing and mental health in the future with you. And um, everybody, like I said before, check out his Facebook, check out his Instagram, James Jimenez. On a Instagram, how do we reach you? Animated J? Is it just Animated J? Animated J, no spaces, no underscores. Thanks a lot, James. Letter J. Letter J. Animated J with the letter J. Letter J, all right. Well, thanks again. Really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. And um, my name is Robert Moraine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll do this awkwardly. What were you about to say? I look forward to the next time we, you know, we connect again. Definitely. Awesome, dude. Good to hear. Me too. Likewise. Oh, shit. My gimbal's freaking out. All right. Good time to end it. 
My name is Robert Bray, Mr. Fantastic. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like it, please subscribe, make sure to follow James. That's it. Peace out.